This is Xavier Hawk with the Thunderbirds Global Action Team. We're here in Venus, Florida, about to interview Jacques Fresco from the Venus Project. They've got a vision of the future that is out of this world. And we're going to check out what that means for you, for me, and for all people, all sentient beings, and the Earth. Let's go check them out. So, how are you doing? Uh, Great. You can introduce us. Introduce Thanks us. for the privilege of presenting these concepts. Have you seen uh, the uh, documentary? Zeitgeist? Zeitgeist. Yes. The second one? Yes. Okay, this is great. I'm going to try to tell you what the Venus Project is about. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pull any punches. I don't want approval. I just want people to listen to what I say, think about it, and then join with us or ask relevant questions. But if you say things like, it'll never work, I can't do anything with that. But if you point out specific areas, say, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about that? Bring it up specifically. All right, so here goes on the Venus Project. I've lived through the last depression. There were 15 million people sleeping in every empty lot across America. And uh, there were still things in store windows radios, washing machines, everything. They didn't have the money. The banks failed. They bought new houses, they bought cars, and when the banks failed, they couldn't pay them off. They couldn't get money, so they were kicked out. And every empty lot in America, there were millions of people sleeping. And of course, at that time, immediately, the government didn't have any relief programs. So Al Capone, the gangster, opened more soup kitchens than the federal government. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. All right. The government also promised war veterans World War I. 600 bucks when they got out of the army to start life anew. Well, of course, the government didn't have that money after the war. So thousands of veterans marched on Washington. They were sleeping again all around the capital. And uh, the government offered them IOUs, but you can't eat that. You can't pay your rent with that. So they marched and they said, we, we want the 600 bucks you promised us. And so the Senate and the House of Representatives didn't like all these veterans sleeping around Washington. So they said to Doug MacArthur, get them out of there. It looks bad. So he had tear gas thrown at the veterans. See, these are things that are not in your school books. Your school books are BS, mm -hmm. and they're made to get people in line. So all your history books have all kinds of men in government always doing the right thing, always saying things nicely. Those are not real people. Real people make mistakes. They do foolish things. And so a history book is made to look good. And of course, if you educate people to think, you can't control them. So you're educated not to think in school. You're programmed to uphold existing institutions. What's the greatest country in the world? The good old USA. The real thing is great in what area? Where did we get this land? We took it by force and violence from people that already lived here, 50 million of them, and we drove them into the desert regions. Then we took California and New Mexico by force. After we stole all the land we needed, we put up the sign, thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Of course, England did the same thing. They say the sun never sets on England. Where do you think they got that land? They took it. And they went into other countries not to help them, but to exploit them. And this is the story of all countries. They are all corrupt. So that brings up the question, that brings up the question, is it human nature to be warlike and I'm going corrupt? to answer all those things okay. for you. So in order to eliminate most of the problems that exist today, we have to declare the earth and all its resources as a common heritage of all the world's people.
people. As long as you got private property, where did you get that from? Where did England get it from? Where did France get it from? They took many islands of the South Pacific and they abused other nations. They went in not to help them, but to exploit their resources. So all the wars that have ever existed are phony. None of them are real, none of them are based on anything. I'm going to back it up, I'll give you detail. A friend of mine was a pilot in World War I. He flew over German munition dumps eight times, and he told me he was ordered not to bomb them. He could not understand that. After the war, there was a book, which is very hard to get, I suggest you look for it, Arms and the Men, that's the name of the book. It was also run in Fortune magazine years ago, and it showed how DuPont had holdings in I.J. Farben. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't bomb it. Right. That's what I mean by war is corrupt, not only corrupt in the sense of killing people, it's worthless, it doesn't solve any problems. So I'm going to try to point out what, what a real war would mean. <clears throat> if war were real, you would draft people, but you take all the war industries, conscript them all, so no one makes a buck out of war, then it's real. But if you make sell war tanks, jeeps, trucks, guns, machine guns, cannons, submarines, airplanes, big business. War has always been highly profitable. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, okay. So it isn't that we outlaw war. What we have to do is ask the question, what makes war? What makes serial killers? What makes crime? So I would, when I say all governments are corrupt, I meant that, all of them, because they operate in a money system, and a monetary system, or money system, is basically corrupt. That goes for religion, too. All religion brought up in a monetary system caters to that system. If you don't understand me, there are movies you can get, very old movies on World War II. You'll see the Catholic Church blessing war tanks in this country and Italy at the same time. So you do all the blessing you can. Mm. So this has nothing to do with the Christ teachings. Now when you think of the concept of God, at least the one they give you, is that God is omnipotent, knows everything, created everything, every galaxy, every universe, and every bug and every plant, everything. And if he knows everything, they usually think in terms of telling him what to do all the time. So when you consider Christ, who was a teacher, a kind and good person, just before they crucified him, he insulted God. He looked up and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You don't have to tell that to God. That's an insult. It's like telling Einstein, 10 and 10 is 20. Mm -hmm. So everybody's always telling God what to do. I have an Aunt Minnie, she's sick, she has a tumor, and she's suffering, please God, ease the pain. They assume he doesn't know a damn thing. They're always telling him, I'm growing corn, but it didn't rain for three months, and my corn is drying up. They're always begging and pointing things out. The God that created, that man creates, is more like man. He gets angry, gets pissed off, creates floods and disease, and then if you don't follow his teachings, you burn eternally. This is not God. This is a psychopath made by man. All religions have made God in the image of man. They cannot conceive of an intelligence far beyond their own. So I'm telling you that religion is a control device attempting to control behavior by telling you what not to do. For example, God doesn't hang a penis on a male and say, don't use it until you get married. The day you got married, bingo, it would pop up. So you see, you live in a pretty sick world that makes everything around the notions of man. Man has a heaven and he's got angels with wings. 
really, they don't need wings to fly around. If they flew around without them, that would be a miracle. Mm. Now, the Bible is loaded with myths, myths where Moses parts the Red Sea. God could have put the people right on the other side without parting the Red Sea. All the stories made are terrible. I don't read the comic strips. I read the Bible because the Bible is myths that are so low grade that it would take a population that was deliberately uneducated to be able to be moved by that. Of course, the average person works hard all their life, and they say, what if I got the show for it? Well, after you kick the bucket, there's everything up there for you. No fees, no debt, no money, no servitude, no social stratification, and no ownership of anything. And that was what, what we're planning on. The Venus Project is to build a world without money. So that you understand what I'm talking about, if you're shipwrecked on an island, both you guys, mm -hmm. and uh, say you had $10 million, he had gold, diamonds, rubies. The island has no fish, no water, and no arable land. You have nothing. You can't eat the money. You can't eat the gold. So what is real value? Resources. Another guy comes over and he says, what if we had ethical people in government, the most ethical people in the world, all through the government of the world? If you ran out of resources, think about this, you'd have stealing, lying, cheating, no matter how ethical people are in charge. So if you live near a waterfall of drinking water, Beautiful water, lots of it. Mm -hmm. Nobody steals it. I've never seen a guy in Jamaica, I lived there for a while, a place called Ochos Rios, where eight rivers come together. Beautiful water. Nobody ever comes at night and fills a bucket and runs away. There's so much of it. Mm -hmm. The air you breathe is absolutely valuable to life. There's no price tag on it. Why? Because it's so abundant, they can't control it. But if you begin to run out of water, which we're doing now, it's a buck for a glass of water. Who does all these things? What is a government? Well, these are a bunch of ignoramuses, all governments, all through history. Your presidents have been stupid people all the way back. Now, our problems are not political, they're technical. Everything that you have, I'd like you to listen to what I say, don't get angry. Think about it. Everything that you have, your washing machines, your electric light, your automobiles, your airplanes, are all technical. Without those things, you'd be pulling boats. Mm -hmm. Slavery. Mm -hmm. You'd be whipped and beaten into slavery. So technology is on the backs of probably no more than 20 people gave us everything. The Edisons, Louis Pasteur, if it wasn't him, we'd all be dead. So the real things that you have that work for you are technical. For example, if you're driving a car, it says, caution, slippery when wet. We would take down all those signs, put abrasive in the highway, so it's not slippery when wet. There'd be signs, drive carefully, 14 miles an hour, school crossing. The power output would be 14 miles an hour, so you can step on the gas all you want to. Now that's what I mean by technical solutions. So in order to understand me better, I would like you to get that black airplane off the shelf, and I'll show you what I mean. Be careful, it's made of ceramic, yes, thank you. Now, if you bring it here so he can get it within the camera. You can put it on the table. Uh, this plane represents aircraft of the future. The passenger section, can you get it in the camera? Good. When the plane lands, the passenger section will be disengaged and go down into the air terminal. And another passenger section filled with a thousand passengers, will come up and lock in, because the airplane doesn't need to rest. It doesn't need to rest while the people are getting out. So you can load it right away and get much more use out of aircraft. That's awesome. 
Not only that, they tell you today that under your seat is a life raft. Now, if you land in the northern sea in the wintertime, you're good for about 12 minutes and you die. I don't care how big your raft is. The passenger section can dis be disengaged and float with all the food and everything you need. In other words, if you're flying in an airplane and the landing gear doesn't come down and the plane has a minor accident, most people don't die when planes hit the ground. They die when the fuel spills over the engine. Fire. So when your landing gear doesn't come down, that dispels the fuel automatically. It blows the fuel out by an inert gas. Then when you come in for landing, there's less of a chance of a problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. If there's anything you don't understand, interrupt me. Okay. Now, suppose you do come in for landing, or say you are coming in for landing, your landing gear doesn't come down, that blows the fuel out. That also sets a spray on the runway. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Of course, the plane is connected to all these things. Yeah. When we use technology that way, see, the airport's a private company. Eastern Airlines, Western Airlines, all private. When it becomes one, when all the world joins together, then we can do these wonderful things. So let me describe in further detail. Suppose you do land, and the landing gear does work, but your brakes fail. Mm -hmm. That plane can plow into people, hangers, fire, all kinds of... The minute the brakes fail, the arresting gear goes up mm -hmm. on, the, on the runway. It's wires, stainless steel, mm -hmm. stop the plane in the middle or the end of the runway. Now, normal people say, you know, well, why don't they do those things? Because you don't have technicians in government. They should, the government people elected should be at the forefront of technology, ecology, behavioral science. You have a bunch of dummies in government, lawyers and businessmen. They don't know anything. Is Obama a nice guy? Maybe so. But he doesn't know what to do. So he thinks by... Uh, giving people temporary purchasing power and giving the money to the people that caused the problem in the first place, the banks and industry. If GE can't turn out a better car than Toyota, they're going to fall. Mm -hmm. If they don't offer you a blueprint of a new car that's cheaper, faster, better, higher quality, longer lasting, they can't remain in business. So what are they going to do giving these companies or bailing out Wall Street or the banks. The banks are the most offensive organization ever conceived of. If you don't understand the meaning of that, let me lay it out for you. If you had a community, say, of 50,000 people, and that community in the monetary system, everybody in that community put 50 bunk bucks into the community bank, owned by the whole community. So when you go to the bank to borrow money, all the profit goes to the community. Mm -hmm. Better schools, higher prices, higher salary for school teachers. See, but private banks, the biggest buildings in New York are bank buildings. You think, gee, they put up that building with your money. Mm -hmm. Where the hell do you think they got the money to build all these fancy buildings? So if you had a food market owned by all the people of the community, you get better food, lower price, organically grown, no artificial coloring, no advertising, no bullshit. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me? Yes. Okay. So they tell you that, yes, but if people got things without money for nothing, that will kill incentive, getting things for nothing. Were you born in America? Yes. Were you? Okay. Just being born in America, you got the railway, the airplane, mm -hmm. electric, electric lights, the telephone, I don't think you had anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. All right, you got all that for nothing. Does it spoil you? Of course not. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Anybody born in any advanced country gets the railway, telephone, musical instruments, radio, all for nothing. That doesn't spoil you. Now, I spoke at Princeton University years ago, and a young man got up and said, I don't like your system. I said, I can't do anything with that unless you tell me what it is that you don't like. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to give people things for nothing. 
So I asked him whether he was born in America. He got all that for nothing. Does that bother you? He said, well, I still don't like it. I said, are you paying your way through college? He said, well, my dad is. Aren't you getting that for nothing? He says, I still don't like it. I said, all right. <clears throat> As I understand, your father is loaded. He's wealthy. If he dies, you want his money to go to the heart fund and the cancer fund, not to you, because you don't believe anybody ought to get anything for nothing. He said, just a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, they left him off the platform. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants things for nothing. Everybody does. The air you breathe, you get for nothing. The water you used to get for I remember nothing. Getting water for nothing. I remember so you see, the world you live in is one gigantic myth. Mm -hmm. They tell you there's such a thing as love. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about love, another big myth. I'm going to tell you what there is. When two people meet that are extensional to one another, meaning they render services, they help them understand things, that's building a relationship. Mm -hmm. And in a real good relationship, both people reinforce or educate one another. Yeah. And then they learn to enjoy the presence of one another. Mm -hmm. But what happens to love when people split up? Bingo, it's hate. Mm -hmm. So there's really no love as a rule because guys go for girls because they're pretty. They go for girls because they have uh, sometimes a nice body and sometimes sexual needs. But actually they have more in common with men. Men do have more in common with men. Women have more in common with women. However, in the relationship, when you put men and women together in a building, the guys go to the girls, the girls go to the guys, but if they've been married 10 years and you bring people together, the guys go to the guys and the girls go to the girls because they have more in common. What girls talk about don't interest most men. And most people have children. A guy came up to me and said, I've got eight children. I said, what are they for? Just having children doesn't mean a damn thing. Mm -hmm. They're good for the army later on. The army takes your kids away. Let me tell you soldiers something, if you can understand what I'm talking about. When they conscript your life, they should conscript all the war industries, every company that makes battleships, everything related to war, conscripted. So they get the same salary as the soldiers because they are putting up their life to protect the country and the country is selling stuff to you. Mm -hmm. So that's called the national debt. The national debt, who the hell do you owe this money to? They say, well, the country owes money to itself. I can assure you, if we owe money to ourselves, we tear it up. You owe money to private lending institutions. That's what war is about. War is big business. Sometimes they sell warships to the enemy, weapons to the enemy, indirectly. So, so I'm going to tell you what you do about it. All political systems cannot solve problems. The system has to break down so that people lose confidence in their elected leaders. We at the Venus Project would like to make a motion picture name of the pictures and the world will be one, showing how we get from here to there, to the moneyless society. That motion picture will go all over the world, can reach millions of people. If we don't make that movie, it's going to be very difficult because people don't know what to do. When people say, well, what about a guy like Ralph Nader? He's a very nice guy, he's absolutely honest, but believe me, he doesn't know what to do. So when you've got a political liberal, or you've got places like free speech TV, where you hear criticism that you won't hear elsewhere, you'll hear that on the station, but they don't know what to do. So they just throw out all the problems. They, well, these politicians are corrupt, or this company is making money out of war. What do you do about it? If you don't offer an alternative, you leave people in midair. I couldn't get on free speech TV. I don't know why. Either they have an agenda which they don't understand. I'm trying to tell you the liberal, the 1929 liberal is dangerous because they don't point out a method of solving problems. We're going to point out ways of solving problems. For example, first thing that has to be done is a global survey. 
by different nations to see what resources we have. Then your survey would show you how many cases of heart disease, cystic fibrosis, that tells us how many hospitals we have to build. So if you do a survey of the resources, not money, there's not enough money in the world to build hospitals, but there's more than enough resources out there. So during World War I and World War II, we didn't have very much money, but we had a lot of resources. So we built a national debt, and we went out and we built, turned out airplanes. At the beginning of the war, America had 600 first-class fighting airplanes. Germany was turning out 2,000 planes a month. So we asked the aircraft industry and the automobile industry to expand their plants. They said, hell no. What are we going to do with the big plants after the war? There's no orders. So the government gave, government means you, they took your money and spent the development of all American industries, 60% of American industry were owned by the American people. They paid for plant expansion, cost plus. So American people don't know this, and then they sold it back for one cent to three cents on the dollar, gave it to industry free. They gave your things away. Mm -hmm. What do you think they're doing with your funds now, they're giving it to the people that created the problem. Mm -hmm. So you think Obama or anybody else is going to solve the problem? Even if he did, he'd be shot. Do you understand Especially that? Especially if he did, There's he'd be vested shot. interests that are more important than your life. I'm trying to tell you that they don't give a damn about people, the government. Proof. We know that. Industry would not outsource if they cared about people. Why does industry outsource? To maintain the competitive edge. Suppose you're a nice guy, and you've got a lot of women and men working in your factory. He takes out medical insurance for the help. He builds a playground for the children of the women that worked in his plant. And instead of paying a minimum wage, which is $5 and something an hour, he pays them 10 bucks an hour. Nice guy. He outsources. You can't stay in business very long. Nobody's going to invest in your company if you take care of it. We want you to invest in packaging, advertising. So being a nice guy will kill you. So being brought up in a country where the bottom line is profit, think about that now. Don't forget, and you people that are religious, Jesus chased the money changers out of the temple. They're all back in now, running the whole show. So. Religion doesn't work. It really didn't, never did. Religious people kill, they get angry, they're jealous, they go to church, and they pray. That isn't what Jesus did. He went around helping people. He associated with bums, beggars, prostitutes, the downtrodden. Today, the priests and ministers and directors of church have dinner mostly with the wealthy people the only ones that can put a new chandelier in the church. Having dinner with a garbage man doesn't help the church. So the church, not only that, I just want to show, show you how foolish it is. When the Pope comes to America, he points to God. When he goes to China, he points the wrong way, the other side of the world. So he's a dummy, stupid man, he's not well informed. They say, I'll see you at sunrise. The sun doesn't rise, the earth rotates in that direction. We still speak with a language that was designed hundreds of years ago. And our language is one of the major problems, because if you learn a new language, a sane language, the big question then comes up is, is it possible to develop a language that's not subject to interpretation? Well, when you read the Bible, somebody says, you know, I think Jesus meant this, and somebody said, oh no, he meant that. And the third person said, no, no, both you guys are wrong. So you got the Lutheran, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic, because it's subject to interpretation. Is it possible to develop a language that's not subject to interpretation? Mathematics. When you tell China it'll cost so much to do something, they don't come out with a different answer. When engineers talk to each other, the language is not subject to interpretation. Otherwise, you couldn't build bridges. 
I think your structure meant this. Oh no, the structure should be this thick. No, you can't do that. In science, technology, mathematics, chemistry, pharmacology, all that language is not subject to interpretation. When a doctor prints a prescription, no matter where you take it, the pharmacist does not interpret that his own way. So it's possible, to try to prove to you, it's possible to develop a language not subject to interpretation. The everyday language used by people has argument in it, it has confusion, that's why you have to go to a psychologist or a counselor, because your language is not clear. Because when you say something, I interpret what you say, goes through my head and comes out different. And he says, I never said that. Oh, said, yes, you did. See, so that doesn't happen in mathematics, technology, banking, work, money, chemistry. So I'm just saying it's the old language. Now, any psychologist that would adjust you to this system has to be stupid or a victim of this system. A psychiatrist also tries to adjust you to this system, which is completely fouled up. So I'm trying to tell you something. Your schools, your social institutions, your universities, your commercial radio and television are all operated, 90% of them anyway, by the monetary system. So you don't get truth anywhere. There's a person who comes to see me sometimes and says, I'm a truth seeker. You'll hear that time and time again. In order to seek the truth, you'd have to know everything. How would you know what you're seeing is true or not? You have to be smart beyond description. So there's no such thing as a truth seeker. Then there's a person that says, well, Jock, you're a utopia. You want to build utopia. There's no such thing as utopia. Any city that's designed today will be improved tomorrow. There's no final frontiers. You can't design the best laptop. Because next year, it'll do more. Today, most cameras don't have film. They have solid state systems. So what will the future be like? No one really knows the detail of the future. But it'll never arrive at the ideal society. It's like saying, <clears throat> design the best television set. You can already design the best television set up to now with what you know. Mm -hmm. But the person talks about final frontiers. That's stupid. They also talk about intelligence. There's no such thing. An intelligent electrical engineer of 75 years ago couldn't get a job today. So what you call intelligence then is not intelligence now. So intelligence is an ongoing process. The more you learn as time goes on, you never get there. Is that clear? You can't design the best of anything. It's an, then they tell you at least we're civilized. No way. It's an ongoing process. A civilized country would not have war, crime, prisons, police, all those are byproducts of an insufficient culture. An insufficient culture makes laws. All man-made laws, I should say most of them, are worthless. When we sign treaties with other countries, if that treaty doesn't serve our interests, we will violate it. So treaties and laws are made attempts made to control human behavior. The only laws that really count is natural law. If you don't eat nutritious food, get enough sleep, no matter what your philosophy is, you get sick. So if you have a population larger than that, which the area can support, you'll have starvation and territorial disputes. As long as you have a population that coincides with the carrying capacity of the earth, you'll be able to get on. As long as you use science and technology and make all its findings available without patents, free of charge to all the nations of the world, when you own patents on nutrition, drugs, medical devices, you hurt people. So the future, every human being will live very well. I'm not talking about a handout society. I think that what the Venus Project proposes is a society where everyone will live better than the wealthiest people today. Everyone. Now, is that possible? Let me give you an example. 
the middle class American today or the middle class person in any advanced society lives better than kings. They have air conditioning in their car, mm -hmm. they have communications in their car, telephones, they fly and fly. Even the Arabs used to think of a magic carpet. The guy sat on the couch and they flew around and they thought that was fantastic. But they never told you when it rained, the carpet got soaked, and everybody got wet, or you had to go to the washroom. What did you do in the magic carpet? Now you have airplanes with television in the airplanes. Even the magic carpet was considered, oh, that's too far out. Mm -hmm. Nothing's too far out. Anything a person can conceive of can be built. So you have to, instead of making soldiers, which are killing machines, I hope I'm getting to a lot of soldiers. They are killing machines. We would educate soldiers to become problem solvers, send them to universities free of charge, so they learn how to solve problems rather than kill. When you kill, you build hatred for the future. You kill children, you kill adults, and that nation that you did all the killing in doesn't have pleasant associations with our nation. The Jewish and Arab situation, Palestinian problem will go on and on and on until the earth is declared common heritage and all the artificial boundaries that separate people will be dissolved. And when all people are brought up together, then you have the brotherhood of humanity. Do you think it's going when to you, take... When you're going to take an economic crash so that the public loses confidence in their leaders, but if they don't see our films, they wouldn't know which way to go. So we are offering a system, a sane system for all the world's people, a high standard of living. You cannot solve a problem in your country alone, like the technocrats want to develop America into a highly technical society. If the Russians and Chinese and the French do nuclear experiments, in the, that the air goes all over the world. Look, today America has 300 submarines. Each one has more destructive power than all the wars in history. How stupid can you be? Then you got a building in Washington called the Pentagon, comprised of super stupid people. <laughs> they are men there, military people, who think in terms of defending the country. There is no way to defend the country, really no way because we have radar, and yet these people hijacked airplanes and flew into the towers because they didn't have an air force. I lived and worked at Pearl Harbor years ago, and I went to see military intelligence. This is 10 years before the attack on Pearl Harbor. And I said, all the planes are in a row. You should stagger them. So they said, don't you think we know what we're doing? I said, no. And they said, well, we do. I then went to the FBI in Hawaii and said, my name is Fresco. All the airplanes are in a row at Pearl Harbor. Said, well, we got radar in there and everything else. I said, they can be picked off. They said, well, when they get past Wake Island, we know about it. What if they hit Wake and Pearl Harbor at the same time? The airplanes ought to be staggered. I'm telling this to the FBI and they said, well, don't you think military intelligence knows what it's doing? I said, no. And they said, well, we do. There was no recording made of that. So I told Larry King once on a show, if you have an airbag in front of you and you get hit on the side, your head goes right through the glass. The whole inside has to be an airbag. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the way you solve problems. So instead of making killing machines, imagine what kind of world we would live in if we gave everybody a free college education, gave books to children free, and upgrade every child. You know that high school kids today hang out in malls? There's no place to go. There should be art centers, music centers, cultural centers, and we should give books to people for nothing. In the future, Getting rid of the monetary system is one of the basic problems. If you don't want crime, if people have access to the necessities of life, they don't steal. Nobody's going to hit you on the head and take your wallet if they have access to food, clothing, housing, music. It costs $50,000 to keep a young kid in jail a year. It doesn't come out any better. 
75,000 for adult, all the police departments. By the way, 90% of the police are going to get angry at me. They are basically corrupt because they should be interested in problem solving, not giving people tickets. In other words, let me give you an idea. In the future, instead of having instruments in a car, that the instruments solve the problem of pumping air in your tire when it's low. When, when you have a policeman says, pull over, well, you learn to drive. This is an arrogant person because people sometimes, the boss says, if you're late for work, you forget coming in. Sometimes a person's late for work, so he does speed. He speeds because he doesn't want to lose his job. And then he's given a fine. Some poor guy that earns minimum wage, you find that guy, you make life real tough for him. Well, God damn it, he's got to drive safely. Driving safely means that we must do away with automobiles and put in a built-in transportation system in the city that takes you any place you want to go, either your dial, the art center, music center, whatever you're interested in, it'll take you there within five minutes. I got the idea from Radio City, the Empire State Building. It takes a million people up and down every year, one million, and they never crash. The elevators don't hit each other, they don't explode, you don't kill people. The, even if you cut the cable that supported the, the elevator, there are brakes that go on the side. That's what I mean by technical solutions. But if you took the elevators of the Empire State and turned them out into the city, that would be your transportation system. So you have a question. Yes. yes. So what is the technical solution for the drive for one human being to conquer or subjugate another? We don't. See, because we have these morons that are running... I understand. Them, you know, and I understand your question. Good. Okay. Really, it was put to me a different way. It said, how are you going to get to all these different nations that are different, they have different concepts of God, different concepts of morality, how are you going to reach them? So I said to myself, hey, Jock, you've got to reach people, otherwise it's not going to work. So I joined the Ku Klux Klan in Miami, and I dissolved it in a month and a half. Then I joined the White Citizens Council, dissolved it in one month alone. Then I asked some questions in New York. I said, what are some of the most backward people? I don't mean to attack anybody, but they pointed out some little Arab community that still believed the earth was flat. So I approached the, the guy in charge. His name was Elbaz. And I told him that I believed the earth was round. He went, that means it can't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he held his hand up, symbolizing a, a sphere. And he said, if the world is round, man fall me down from the side of the world. All the water fall off. And I was thinking, gee, this guy is using the best tools he has to think about it. So I said, gee, if I can't get to that guy, I can't change the world. So I put a balloon in his hand, and I rubbed it with fur very fast. And I put some cornflakes in his hand and told him to hold his hand about six inches away from the rubber balloon. Mm -hmm. And all the cornflakes jumped up to the balloon because I charged it statically. Mm -hmm. Can you understand yeah. that? And his jaw hit the pavement. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, uh, world he magnet? I said, eh. Ah, he pointed to his head, mm -hmm. meaning he now understands. And he went in the other room telling all those people who believe the earth was flat that it could be round. Mm -hmm. So, but if you use technical language, you're not communicating. You say there's centripetal force, just the opposite of centripetal. Right. They don't know what the hell you're talking about. So there is a way to get the people. The way you get the people is not attack them. Show them. Give them reasons. Show them evidence of your viewpoint. But don't attack them. So here's the way you bridge the difference between different countries. All countries need clean air, clean water, arable land, and nutritious food, and a relevant education. That means no bankers, no lawyers, no businessmen, no advertising, because these fields do not contribute anything to the earth. So in the future, 
they'll be agronomists, mm -hmm. sociologists, social psychologists, um, be educators, but not the way they are today. They educate you to fit in with this system. Education in the future will prepare you for change and future. And when you say, is that right? Well, as far as we know, today, we think it is. So when you begin to talk that way, if you see a new airplane without wings, normal people, normal means loused up, mm -hmm. will say, it doesn't have wings, it'll never fly. The proper way to speak is, I'm not technical. How do you propose to lift off the ground without wings? The language has no argument in it. And they, at high school today and universities, they have debating teams. You try to win, I try to win, you shouldn't have that. What you need is dialogue where you share ideas, not debate. Mm -hmm. You're out there to win, you're out to understand different points of view. So you live in such a loused up culture, loused up society, that we all prostitute ourselves for money. People sell their voice, they sing, then they tell you to buy this kind of toothpaste mm -hmm. or this kind of hair lotion. Now think about this. Here's a young girl standing behind the counter in a department store, selling hair lotion, tangy lipstick, and what can I do for you, ma'am? If she works there 18 years and retires, is that using her brain? You're wasting the brains of millions of people that do repetitive jobs that get them nowhere, they know smarter than they were, mm -hmm. so the world of the future that I'm talking about will upgrade people continuously, upgrade, and there'll be no technical people in charge. Once you understand, there's no social stratification. Everyone gets whatever they need. Well, do we have that kind of resource? Yes, we do. We have more than enough resources to house everyone on earth not Jimmy Carter's way with a hammer and nails. You're not going to rebuild America. This man is a, a stupid individual. I'm telling you, like it is, these people don't know how to solve problems. We can lay houses like eggs. We have metals today that have a memory. We have plastic materials today that have a memory. There are sutures being experimented upon today, surgical sutures. The doctor ties the surgical knot, then he straightens it out, he sticks the suture straight through the, he cuts the skin, sticks it through, and the heat of the body causes it to tie a surgical knot. Mm. So the future is going to be fantastic. You don't have to dig up nickels and dimes for research in heart disease, cystic fibrosis, cerebral palsy, we'll give every lab whatever the hell they need. That's a sane society. Do we have to go through a societal collapse? I'm sorry about I mean, that. Does it have to be like an Armageddon scale like collapse? I'm sorry or... about that. I wish people were reasonable. You can sit and talk to them. Right. They are not reasonable, nor are they intelligent, nor are they civilized. I'm not attacking people. I'm just saying that your society did that to you. All societies do that. You might ask an American Indian, what would you like? What do you want? He says, I'd like a teepee. And you ask a Nesbo, what do you want? An igloo. Well, they can only want within their educational level. You understand? I'm yes. not condemning people. We will generate new conditions where people will dare to dream. Today they don't even dream. I don't know you too well, but I don't believe you drive the kind of car you want. You drive what you can afford. I don't believe you live in the kind of house you want to live in. You live in what you can afford. Maybe your house would have the history of films, you know, or whatever you're interested in. The kind of future we want to make is that every house is designed to meet human needs, and it fulfills the, the, the widest ambitions. So if you're an artist, or a painter, or a writer, or a film collector, or anthropologist, your house will serve your interest. Why do we do that? Free, by the way. All the equipment in your house would be free. We do it because the smarter you are, the richer the world. Mm -hmm. Every person kept from education hurts the world. I'm not talking about conventional education. I'm sure you understand that by now. Okay, that's more propaganda than education. The reason I don't speak at most universities is they depend on support from the establishment. 
And if I attack this establishment, who the hell's going to support the university? The same with television and radio. The reason I'm not on most television shows is because they depend on automobile companies, the, the drug companies that pay for their time on the air. So they can't be truthful. They can't be honest. Would they like to be? Perhaps they would, but they can't afford it. Some people can't afford to be decent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Very much so. Now, the world I'm talking about has no prostitution. You can't sell drugs because there's no money anymore. You can go to the access center and access anything you want. It's cheaper to give things to people than put them in prison. If it costs $50,000 a year to keep a kid in prison, he doesn't come out any better, or an adult. Isn't it cheaper to make things available to people? Take 10 kids in prison, that's a lot of money. And if you had a center in your city where people can access a wristwatch, whatever they want, give it to them. That's the end of most crimes. Now there's such a thing as serial killers, different types of crimes. What we do is nip that in the bud in school during the early stages of development is when that happens. So I want to try to make this very clear. It's very important that you listen carefully, not get angry. If you are brought up in the Deep South, an uneducated region, you're going to speak with a southern accent. I don't care what nationality you were, you're going to speak with a southern accent and you're going to reflect the culture around you. You're going to say, I'm going to give me a nigger, I'm going to kick his ass in. Facial expressions, manner, all learn from the community. And they tell you we're individuals. We reflect our culture and subgroup. If you don't understand me, talk to a Frenchman. He speaks English with a French accent. Germans use their hands a lot. So you see, go to Italy, you say, eh, manna de americano. That, that's all picked up from the environment. There is no Italian nature. There's no human nature. If you're brought up by an Eskimo family or the headhunters of the Amazon from, as a baby, if you never saw anything else, you'd be a headhunter. And if I said to you, doesn't it bother you to have 10 shrunken heads in your hut? He says, yes, my brother has 20. <laughs> So is he a bad guy? No, that's where he's coming from. If you were brought up in Nazi Germany as a baby, all you see is Heil Hitler, Deutschland over alles, Germany above all. Mm -hmm. If you see nothing else, if you've read nothing else, Heil Hitler. Mm -hmm. Is he bad? No, he's a victim of culture. So we don't hate anybody because everybody is perfectly well adjusted where they're coming from. The southerner that lynches the black is not a bad person. He's a person that's been brought up in a warped environment. Do you understand that? Yes. That's why there's no prisons in the future, no police, because we maintain a growing environment in all our schools. The racial problem does not occur because all kinds of people are brought up together. But if parents go to work, you're a Catholic. You don't play with that little Lutheran boy. Parents, as a whole, do not know how to raise children. Oh, don't get mad at me. Think about what I'm saying. So if you want to live in a world of peace, abundance, the end of war, poverty, unemployment, hunger, it'll take a resource-based economy. So if you don't like a resource-based economy, it may be what you project into it. There's not a group of technical people that say, you will work in Area D. You, Area K. That's what they pick the picture. They get that from Hollywood, where the robots walk over and choke people. All these movies on the future are hostile. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do with science or intelligence. They're made by stupid people with stupid scriptwriters, hacks. So I'm telling you that the future can be fantastic, fabulous, and ever exciting and interesting. Of course, there'll be no tightrope walkers, nobody beating each other up, there'll be no bullfights, but people have to be educated out of it, not forced out of it. You can't outlaw religion, it'll go underground. So what we really do is translate all religious teachings into a way of life. So a person says, you're, you're trying to make the earth a better place, a minister told me that. You're trying to make the earth, my kingdom is out there. 
but they forget that Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's no business in heaven, no private property, no money, none of those things. Don't you understand? Read your Bible. You can then see how far man has strayed from the teachings of the wisest people that ever lived. There's no better time to make all this happen than right now. I mean, we can't say, oh, this is going to happen in the future and this and that. It's like, well, if we want to see it in the future, then we have to be taking steps right now. The way I see the, 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 the nature of people, like, have you seen the Alex Jones rebuttal to your whole zeitgeist thing? The, it was like three videos on YouTube. Did you get a chance to see it? Yes. What did you think of that? Well, look, first of all, it might run an hour, hour and a half where normal people were conditioned for 30, 40 years to a certain value system. So instead of equal time, which is stupid, yeah. if, you go, if, I, if, I, if I'm given equal time to a priest in a Catholic church, one hour each, he will win. Because people are already conditioned to, to that point of view. Right. So I need a month and a half to his hour. Right, I got you. And then it would be equal time. So they don't even know how to run a debate or discussion. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to tell you something. The real question you're trying to ask, okay, all that may be true, how do we get from here to there? We get from here to there, the system has to break down. People have to lose confidence in the people they elected. Then they have to look for something new. But they don't know what to look for. That's why we want to make a major motion picture that shows how to get from here to there. It's too difficult for me to describe yeah. in this short time all the detail. But I did tell you, I joined the Klan, I joined the White Citizen Council, I, I met with people that believe the earth is flat, and I turned them around. Now, somebody said to me, do you believe in love? I said, what do you mean by love? And you get all these different interpretations. So he said, do you love your mother? I said, in what area? He didn't understand what that meant. My mother was a racist and a bigot, but she was nice to me. So I didn't love her in that area. Mm -hmm. So let's examine love. That's kind of a stupid word. Do you like everything you've ever done in your life? Mm -hmm. Do you? No, of course not. Okay. Not. If you live with a duplicate of yourself, how long will you be together? Right. You know what I'm getting? So sometimes you love yourself, sometimes you don't. So if you get married, and you live with a woman, sometimes you'll love her, sometimes she won't. Sometimes she'll love you, sometimes she won't. Meaning, act favorably toward you. Mm -hmm. Because if your behavior is very different than hers, not wrong, different, she may not like you. Mm -hmm. But she may even hate you. So, so you say, what happened to love? Well, there's no such thing. It's a fluctuating thing. development, well, you want to go, then, and that person is, is also, lift you. Also, if you marry, and you live out, you go out a lot on contour, mm -hmm. on, on concert tours, or whatever you do, you become somewhat different than when you come back home, your wife is always in the kitchen cooking and wiping the baby's ass. So she doesn't evolve, and sometimes you do, and your values change. So I said, I don't know what it is, honey, but uh, I, I'm not satisfied. I want out. She said, well, you're not getting out. I'm taking the house for the kids. So all this... All this stuff in the future will disappear because people will not marry for security. They'll marry because they share ideas mm -hmm. and values. There'll be no divorce lawyers. They cost you $2,000 to split up. Who the hell is he? Where did he come from? There's another guy with a white collar. says, I pronounce you man and wife. Well, who is he? How can he pronounce you man and wife? Well, if two people love each other, no one can break that. So you see, the world you live in is so full of shit, yeah. it's so artificial, I don't even know where to start. Well, how do we get rid that, of The move with the motion picture, and we have to have more lectures, more films like this out there, and people, some people will be turned around. But remember this, you don't have to convince everybody. Mm -hmm. It takes very few people, less than 7,000, to operate everything on Earth. Just take care of people. Give them what they want. Let them have their freedom. However, if they hurt another person, we don't put them in prison. We help them. How do we prevent overpopulation? Okay. Through education is the best way. We don't want to kill people. So if you show people a film 
called Dynamic Equilibrium. We, will, we have to make a lot of films. Yeah. We have to be sponsored, because Roxanne and I can't change the world alone. If you get our books and videotapes, you will see the kind of world I'm talking about. I want to show you a 15-minute film that we made for Saudi Arabia. We are always invited all over the world. And so before I go, I make a film for that country to show them what it can be. Not what it will be, I don't know. What it can be if we join together. So the film has a little bit of their values in it, just to get our foot in the door. Then when we get there, we turn them around. What do we turn them around to? How to use the earth intelligently. What is needed is the intelligent management of the earth's resources for the benefit of all the world's people, not profit. I don't know what's so hard to understand about that for people. I don't well, know why people... Well, you'll understand, run this film, and, and the negative letters that you get will say things like, who makes the decisions in the future? They're angry. What they're really asking is, how do we arrive at decisions, not who makes them? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. We take samples of the soil from all over the world and bring them to central agriculture. There are many agricultural research labs, and there they analyze the soil. And by the content of the soil, they'll tell you it's best to grow sugarcane for so many years, you'll get the highest yield from this soil, then rotate the beets. That's not an opinion, that's a finding. So you were brought up, I believed, to believe that everyone should have a right to their own opinion. Most people were brought up that way. So if your sister lived across the street from me and I see 10 guys coming out of her apartment, I can have all kinds of opinions. She may be a language instructor, a ballet instructor, but if you give people a right to their own opinion without surveillance, without understanding, you're creating a dangerous environment. They think it's democratic. They think they live in a democratic society. So they come to me, normal people, women, normal means mixed up in my term. They come to me and say, in your society, will I be able to participate? I said, well, you can participate right now. How would you prevent automobile accidents? I don't know. How would you prevent war? I don't know. Did you vote for this space program? No. Did you vote for any highway system in America? No. Did you vote for the building of schools, colleges, anything? No. Where the hell do you participate? All that's an illusion. Everybody thinks they live in a participatory democracy. Let me tell you what a participatory democracy might be like. Our president might criticize another country on television for about an hour and a half. We'd say anything else you want to add. He said, no. Then we invite the prime minister of that country on the air for an hour and a half. Then we invite the prime minister of Sweden on. He said, they're both full of shit. This is how I say it. That's a democracy. Every point of view on the air, not just good old USA. God bless America. Didn't God make everybody on earth? What the hell are you killing them for? Every product out there is made by God, according to religious people. They don't even know how to be religious. The church doesn't deal with anything real, because if it did, they'd be out of business. If a church got up and chased out the money changers, he'd, he'd have to shut down. So you see, the church itself has become corrupt. And some churches say, if you don't go to this church, you don't go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So how corrupt can you be? And God doesn't judge people. If you're brought up in the South and, and all you hear is the goddamn niggers of this, the goddamn Jews of that, get a big dumb Swede to clean out your cellar. If you get that propaganda all your life, do you think you'll be judged for that? So if people are made the way they are by culture, how can they be judged? And then conceive of Satan who gets to normal people and says, screw around with your best friend's wife. The tempter. Who made the tempter? God. So what have you got there? You got a confused story, a myth that's so terrible would be an insult to a God if he existed. So consider this. Even Carl Sagan tried to raise funds to communicate with extraterrestrials. Now let's assume that there are people on other planets 
and they fly here. Anything that can fly a hundred billion light years through space is not like us. You can't talk to them. The Democrats can't talk to the Republicans. The Republicans can't talk to the Communists. The Communists can't talk to the Socialists. Husbands and wives can't talk to each other. Children and parents. How the hell are they going to talk to extraterrestrials that are super intelligent? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So most people don't even talk to each other. They talk at one another. Do you understand? Talking to each other is sharing ideas. Now, you can't share ideas unless the person has similar values. They tell you there's such a thing as communication. No such thing. In other words, you can't communicate with anyone unless they have similar values to you. Otherwise, you can try to change their way of thinking. But if they're too far gone, you know, in an old way of thinking, like saying, well, uh, I don't know how to picture your world. Well, if you took your grandmother to Miami Beach and she saw the girls walking around with their butts hanging out, she said, they've gone too fur, and she's right where she's coming from, but not right for today. So no one say, well, will I like living in the future? I don't know. The future is different than it was 500 years ago. So is it, does it do with your likes? Does it take care of most people medically? Does it give them the opportunity to study whatever they want to study without the need for money? Yes. How do you prevent takeover? How do you prevent people uh, uh, subjugating others and, and controlling the, the system? Okay. That occurs in scarcity. When there's scarcity, people hit you on and take your wallet. But if they have access to the necessities of life, they don't steal. Even That's the a psychopaths that want to uh, run the whole Okay, world. now you're talking about mental disorders. Mm -hmm. We catch them early in school. What about and the, the ones that are, that are totally uh, self-centered in running the, running the country, running yeah. the planet, okay. running the corporations, That's a, that's a psychopaths? Okay, okay. You can detect that in the schools right away when they're very young and clean it out. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, the kids in New York used to drop bricks on the subway trains. Not that they were psychopaths or ill, they needed excitement in their lives. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So instead of ordering kids around to do exercise like they do in Germany, you see these thousands of kids exercising, we build a big lake in the middle of all the cities and there's a hill in the middle of the lake mm -hmm. and a craft shop where you can make anything you want to make. To get there you've got to row a boat, you've got to climb the hill. Mm -hmm. Don't order people to do exercise. Build it in the design of your community. Now I want to explain the design of the new communities. In South Miami, there was a hurricane several years ago, destroyed many buildings. Today they warn you there's a hurricane coming in three hours. Everybody gets in their car, where the hell do they go? They don't know where they're going. This building here is designed as a shelter. We will make many of these. No hurricane can pick up an inverted cone. There's no flat, flat roof to suck up. This is a turbine that's turned by the hurricane. That keeps the food in the refrigerator going. All the lights. Usually during the hurricane there's a blackout, so all your food spoils. This is designed for hurricanes. But during the week, it's recreation. So we will put these all through the West Indies, no cost, all through Florida. Different places for people to go. There's tornadoes that are ripping houses of peace all over the country, and the congressmen don't know what to do. Do you understand this? Yes. If we built this, there is no problem. Now, we will also design buildings that where the roof doesn't come off, like this. Mm -hmm. So we will design windows that are shatterproof. In other words, instead of saying, you know, be careful, do this, we build it in. You do understand this. Now let me describe the city. This represents a typical city during the early stages of the Venus Project. Mm -hmm. This building system has to do with public health. Mm -hmm. That's food, nutrition, surgery, medicine, everything. If you work here, you can live here if you choose to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You can live anywhere. But if you live here, it's convenient. Mm -hmm. The way the plants are arranged, you can't see another building. They're in, like this area. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? Beautiful plants and lakes and ponds and streams. Every we only design one eighth of the system mm -hmm. and reproduce it. Mm -hmm. Instead of each architect designing every damn building, that cuts cost. Now, if you build suburbia today, the way you build it, all these houses all over the place, you have to drive that way, take your kid to school, mm -hmm. that way for shopping. Mm -hmm. It's chaos. Mm -hmm. New York City is one gigantic hunk of chaos. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can learn to love, love it, too, if that's all you've ever known. So in this city, everybody's the same distance from the center building. This is a library. Before the public library, women marched to get a library built, and they had rotten eggs thrown at them. Reason? They felt if you give books to people free, they wouldn't buy books from bookstores. But they got the library in eventually. Mm -hmm. And people read a little bit, and they bought more books than ever, because they knew more. Here we have free access to cameras. Anyone in the city can check out a camera mm -hmm. just like you do a book. Mm -hmm. You use it for a month, or then you return it to the camera center in your neighborhood. Reason for returning it is they keep it in key shape. Mm -hmm. So here you can check out a violin, saxophone, drums, just like a library. If you make things available, it's cheaper. No cuts crime, mm -hmm. high percent, and envy. Guy looks at your saxophone, boy, I sure wish I can afford that. He can. He doesn't need to own it, all he wants is the use of it. Mm -hmm. So these are access centers. Do you understand mm -hmm. that? In the middle building, you have dental care, medical care, shopping, child care. This way you have to go, that way to the dentist, that way to the doctor. There are hospitals, everything you need for all these people mm -hmm. in the center. The whole community hires for automobile mechanics. So anything that goes wrong is maintained by a community for a few cents a day, but they get a good good income. Everybody lives well, mm -hmm. but nobody exploits anybody else. If you get a, a root canal, bad infection in your tooth, I can make a thousand five hundred fixing that up. If he bangs into your car, somebody makes a thousand bucks straighten out the dent. If you make your car of memory material, when your dent it comes back out, mm -hmm. the, the people that straighten out things will hate your guts in a money system. In a non-monetary system, everything's okay. Do you understand me? I 100% understand. Not only that, but I believe that that is destiny. That is our future. The question is, is how well, do you get people? those films out there? And of course, Roxanne and I can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. We need you. We need your camera. We need those films out there. It's a big job. Mm -hmm. Either you take it on or you go to hell. I mean, we're driving downhill now. We're moving. I'm against the space program. You may not even imagine that. But I'm afraid of any one nation going out there. Because yeah. sooner or later you have nuclear weapons, you don't need airplanes, you just drop them mm -hmm. where you want to. I'm afraid of that. First, I'd like to see all the nations learn how to live together in peace, then we go out on a joint venture. Some people say that it's it's going to take World War Three to wake people up and say, you know, we've had enough of war. Look at how much we've destroyed ourselves, our environment. You know, it, there can't be another war. We won't be able to live anymore. No, I, I a big major. That. So forget about that. The question is, how do you prevent war? Oh, by cool by the tr transition works so that everyone, every city has access mm -hmm. to whatever. We have the resources. Now, let me tell you something. There's such a thing as a shortage sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, we blockaded Germany so they couldn't get to Sumatra and couldn't get rubber. So they invented synthetic rubber. Mm -hmm. The Germans were technically trained. So we will give every research lab assignments of making materials that we're short of. Who runs Got the, it? Who runs the, the, okay. the organization? In the beginning, uh, we have the Department of Agriculture. They maintain the agricultural system, but not based on their opinion, based on the size of the population. Mm -hmm. They tell us how much farm area we need. Then the medical department tells them what nutrition is needed. Because mm -hmm. we need vitamin A, vitamin mm -hmm. B, because the agriculture department doesn't know that. So the medical department is not a boss. They merely say that 4,000 people in the city, this is what they need. Right. So there's no more opinions. What do you think? 
what do you know about that? Mm -hmm. So our buildings are insulated, photoelectric cells on the roof, that's by the electrical engineering department to outfit and support, say, 32,000 people. Mm -hmm. Whatever the problem is, it's no more based upon some guy putting his own thing in there. Right. No more of that. Based upon need, uh, based upon matching the research. Surveys, to, yeah. global survey. Mm -hmm. Now, no one runs anything. Like, the head of the electrical engineering department is just a guy that says, we need new electric lines in this area. Where did he get it? From the survey department. Mm -hmm. So the electric lines are breaking down here. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So there's no more self-aggrandizing positions. Right. You can't pay off anybody because there's no money. Right. So I can't get my brother-in-law a better job than your job. Everybody is well off. Right. So the basis of corruption is money, scarcity. Mm -hmm. So we eliminate scarcity. The transition between now and then are going to have problems. Yeah. I can't do the thing about that. Mm -hmm. Till we get to the first base, mm -hmm. we're going to build the first city, maybe in Ecuador or Brazil. I don't know where, but I'll build it anywhere. I have no national loyalty. Right. My loyalty is to the earth and all the people on it. Mm -hmm. I don't care what, where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yes, but if you say, oh, I'm an American, I'm proud of it. I'm a Spanish, I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. Italiano, mm -hmm. See, no good. Mm -hmm. You're separating I'm people. Hmm? I'm human. We're human. We're human together. Yes, this is what the Venus Project is. The, the Venus Project about. is not about architecture. Mm -hmm. It's about a way of thinking. Because nobody moves into the city. First, they're oriented. Mm -hmm. Don't let that scare you. Oriented means they're told where the access centers are, how the city works, and why it's built this way. Mm -hmm. Just like when you fly an airplane, you have to be put in an aviation environment. Mm -hmm. Have you gone to different nations and say, here are my plans for a city, do you want who? to build it? Go to who? Nations or... Yeah, yes, I've been invited to Dubai, you know? Oh, yeah. They That's moved from a hand tool economy 10 yeah. years ago to a modern place. They called me and they sent an email and they said, we want you to come to Dubai. I said, what for? To design new cities, a world's fair, and the tallest buildings in the world. So Roxanne and I went there. They laid out the red carpet, treated us very nicely. Then they said, what do you think of our society as it is now? I said, I have to go all through it, then I'll tell you. So they flew us all over to their islands in the sea, yeah. Palma. We've been all through <laughs> Dubai. Mm -hmm. And they fed us real well. Then I said, it's not going to work. They said, what do you mean? They got angry. Yeah. I said, don't get angry. Listen to me. If you have a system that depends on tourists, if there's an economic dip in the world, you're not going to get any tourists. So they said, but we have, we're building a lot of things. I said, like what? We build a big, a big desalinization plant that converts all water to drinking water. And I flew over it. We landed. I looked it over. I said, what do you do with the water? I said, we built the world's biggest water park where you slide down the hill. And all. I said, that is unsane. Mm -hmm. Not insane. Right. Unsane means not bright. I said, so you live in a desert country. You should build hydroponic gardens. You know what that yeah. is? Soilless agriculture. Mm -hmm. You should build and import all materials you have scarcity of. You build for tourists. Every building is a different size. You got architects from all over the world in Dubai, and they're all egotists. Mm -hmm. They build a tall building with their name on it. See? Yeah. So architect Jones, architect Smith, that's the b bullshit world. So what you need is something like this, mm -hmm. survival system. Then later on in the creative world, which I'll get into a little later. In the creative world, you go into detail, but I better finish this. All these roadways are very dark, black, mm -hmm. and there's piping underneath it running up and back. In Florida, you get 50 watts for every square yard. So you pay no electric bills, you burn no fossil fuels. It generates its own electricity from, and, from the sun. And heat and yeah. cold, and these are indoor agriculture, outdoor agriculture. Mm -hmm but you don't own anything. Mm -hmm. There are 100 bicycles right here, mm -hmm. and you ride through the country. You check them out. Mm -hmm. This way, you go to the golf. If you play golf, I don't like that at all. But if you do, there's a clubhouse 
when you get in there, you check out the clubs you want, right. play, leave them there. This way you lug all the crap home, you got a closet full of crap. You get what I'm talking about? I do. It goes much further that way. This is like, this is my perfect dream I've of been culture, working on this all my life. I understand. You understand that? How do we get rid of a person's ego, the need to okay. control things? Because yeah, okay. that's really what it comes down to, is the internal oh, I'm gonna corruption, answer that. the internal I'm gonna answer fear. That. Okay. When I was a kid, other kids used to say, my belief is better than yours. Right. That's ego. Right. I met one kid, very different. I built a strange airplane. I never built anything normal. Mm -hmm. Rotary wings. Right. Uh, not propellers, the wings rotated. Mm -hmm. I built all kinds of strange airplanes. Do you understand that? Yeah. All right. And the normal kids used to make fun of me. What the hell's that? What the hell's that supposed to be? But I would, I worked alone a lot because I didn't depend on approval mm -hmm. of other kids. If you depend on that, you become normal. Mm -hmm. So I did not seek approval. I seek solving the problem of the airplanes that didn't fly that I made. Right. So a guy came over, an older guy, and he watched one of my planes dive into the ground. And I was sitting there scratching my head. He says, you know, Jack, your wing is too far back. I said, where did you get that idea from? He says, I made the same mistake you did. So I didn't make a mistake. I didn't know any better. So I put my wing a little forward, and it didn't do that. And he was extensional to me. Mm -hmm. Not, my plane is better than yours. Right. That's ego. When you're extensional to other people, they are more extensional to you. Yeah, I found that. Ego is a high price you pay for self-approval, losing the broad point of view of working together instead of being competitive. More joy. Sharing idea. Mm -hmm. So we raise kids in our schools to be, to share values. So, in uh, that I tell you about the island in the middle of the lake. Mm -hmm. Right now, in that system, when they get to the craft shop, they can build an automobile, but it won't go together unless four kids lift up the car mm -hmm. and the others put the wheels on. So we don't say cooperate. They don't. It won't go together. We just build it into so, the system. Right. You understand what I'm talking about? So you can answer questions. Yeah. All right, so when they ask you who makes the decisions, you say no one. They arrive at decisions. That's like testing agriculture. That's like the old, that's like the, you know, the old original people. Scientific the, method. Well, no, the, the, the original peoples in the United States, they came to dec decisions as a community. You know, they would, the, the men would talk. They, and they would put them to test. Yeah. If things like engineers don't say, this is the strongest wire made, the other engineer says, I don't understand. Well, it's tensile strength, is so much. Mm -hmm. He says, that much? He says, then he puts it in the machine, tears it, and says, you're right. Mm -hmm. I love that system. Mm -hmm. When we design airplanes, we figure the wings will hold 25 pounds per square foot. That's safe. Then we put sandbags on it until it breaks. He says, the calculations are right. Mm -hmm. I like that system. Then when we finish building an airplane, we pull it up off the ground and drop it to see if the landing gear holds it. Mm -hmm. Even though your calculations say, it, well, we don't trust that either. Mm -hmm. So I like that system, and that's the system we use from now. Suppose a guy comes up to me and says, suppose a guy wants to build a swept forward wing, and another guy wants to build a swept back wing. Who decides we build swept forward, swept back, all kinds? Why not? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to be this or that? Mm -hmm. That's only in a money system. You have limited funds. With Resources available, we'll give every lab whatever they need. No more nickels and dimes. Can we would like a new extension to study diseases of the eye. Well, that'll take a few years to raise the money. We got the resources. We'll build the shelters. We'll build what we need. Again, nobody owns anything. You don't own it anyway. If you got 20 acres of land, you kick the bucket, somebody else is there. So. You, all you, you really don't want money. You don't want to own anything. All you want is access to what you need. Be able to do what your soul is longing to do. Yes, mm -hmm. except hurt other people. So yeah. we'll, we'll go to work on you if you do. We don't put you in prison, mm -hmm. okay? We're not kind or good. We know that the old system is crude. They didn't know how to solve problems, so they made laws. Mm -hmm. Or a guy speaks to somebody and says, do you understand? The guy says, no. He yells. Damn it, I told you this. And, and then if he makes a fist, mm -hmm. then he punches. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't know how to reach other people 
Well, let me use your fist. Like, if a guy wants to hurt you, a lot of people are angry in the world today. They come over and try to hurt you and say, where did you get that shirt? The Salvation Army? Mm -hmm. Now, if you say, well, I paid more for that than you paid for your whole outfit, he succeeded in hurting you. Mm -hmm. The proper answer is, I found it in the reject pile of the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. See, I can't hurt you. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of people get angry and they don't, why aren't you married three times? No, 11. Yeah, yeah. So they're trying to hurt you when they come up with something like that. Wasn't your father once in prison? You know, 11 times. They can't hurt you. There's a lot of people out there very unhappy in the world and they, they, they want to want us two guys punch the hell out of each other. And that injures their brain, they become senile earlier. And so there'll be no prize fights. Not that I don't like them. They're not good for people. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, what's the matter with a prize fight? Two guys there? What's the matter with a bullfight? The bull sometimes in Spain, they have the bull run down the street. And people get the hell out of the way. That's normal to that culture. We will outgrow that through education. You can't outlaw it. Mm -hmm. You can educate them out of it. So all the things that we consider normal, like a young lady, Flying an airplane upside down through a hangar is to amuse a lot of sick people. Mm -hmm. They don't need to fly upside down to show me how good you are. Or people, at least when I was a kid, I don't think you've ever seen this, but people used to sit on a telephone pole for seven days. People would bring them food to break a record. Mm -hmm. Why? Because people didn't exist. They have no recognition, so they'll sit on a telephone pole. Mm -hmm. Or they'll walk a tightrope mm -hmm. between two skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. And next year, nobody comes to see them unless their brother in is on their shoulder right. while they're walking a tightrope. Then they've got their nephew on his shoulder. Right, right. I'm, I'm, you live in a sick world that demands what they call entertainment. You should have been in the auto races. There was a pileup of 10 cars. They all burst into flames. <laughs> These are sick people. Yeah. They're all sick in this culture. What they go for is not socially productive. Mm -hmm. And so in the future, we will have soap operas, the same kind of thing, only one difference. The little girl comes up to her daddy and says, Daddy, I'm going to be a social psychologist. And he says, what's that? Mm -hmm. Then it shows what it is. So every soap opera, you come away smarter. Mm -hmm. Everybody that comes through here walks out different. That's basically what my show is about. It's like, it's entertaining, combat, this and that, but it's like, it elevates through the process of entertaining. It's yeah. called entraining. You do the best you can. Mm -hmm. right. So in the future we'll have less and less bullshit on TV, more and more informative stuff mm -hmm. that makes people not only wiser, better, kinder, mm -hmm. and this to me is all religion translated mm -hmm. instead of a verbal hobby mm -hmm. where you keep, keep bothering God all the time. Mm -hmm. So like I say, there's nothing in this that will hurt anybody. And all the systems, people are prepared for change. They're brought up to, to accept change emotionally and intellectually. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you build a statue of Fresco and put it here and say, this guy designed that city, you hold people back. Mm -hmm. That's the ego. Mm -hmm. I don't want any statues. I told Roxanne if I kick the bucket, take the ashes and flush it down the john. Mm -hmm. you know, I have no reason to want to be remembered. I want you to go on and make it better. Mm -hmm. Do you have a laptop? Yeah. Do you? Yes. Okay. A laptop 10 years ago <coughs> would cost about $10 million. It's what a laptop does. Yeah. It occupied a whole uh -huh. building. Today they got it all in one little laptop. Mm -hmm. Two years from now, that would be half the size, oh, okay, and you'd be able to verbalize command. Okay. Yeah. You understand? And no film and cameras. So if we go all out research and development, the standard of living will soar. All it takes is one of these cities to well, be functional. We, did, we got already, I've been commissioned to go to Ecuador and design a museum of the future to elevate their kids. They just invited us to Turkey about um, two months ago. We went there and they were so impressed that they're going to start a Venus project at their university. That's great. And they want me to come down and design also a museum of the future in the first new city. So right now we've got people in Ecuador, we've got people all over the world writing about the Venus project. So I'll show you something 
unless, <coughs> unless you can get that bottom book. It's called The Irish Entrepreneur. He, the bottom book on that, yeah, hold the other book so you don't fall off. Yeah, the big, it's a bigger one. Yeah, just that one. Now bring it over here and I'll show you something. That Irish entrepreneur, they uh, called us and they emailed us and said, would you do an article for this magazine? I said, well, send me a copy and I read it and it's a money magazine, it's a business mm -hmm. magazine. I said, my article is against everything your magazine stands for. They said, do it, we'll print it anyway. I said, under the condition that you don't change one word, they signed an agreement and they ran the Venus Project in Ireland. I just want to show you what they did. Redesigning the world. And they didn't change a word. It's all our stuff. Fish farms mm -hmm. to grow fish and put back into the ocean. Can't keep taking things yeah. out. So all of these are methods of solving social problems. Cities in the sea, you don't have soil, you hide a hydroponic garden. Mm -hmm. And we have nets under the water growing sea edible food. Mm -hmm. So people can live in the ocean. What they do there is we build the reefs. The U.S. Army, about 40 years ago, dumped 65 tons of nerve gas off the coast of Miami. The Army. How stupid can you be? Even the soldiers are all orders are orders. No way, you don't do those things. See, they're not conditioned to think no. or question authority. No. So in our society... I had a hard time because I fought against did, that. Did anything bother you up to now that I talked about? Nothing. Okay. You're free to do most anything. The cities in the sea are to reclaim the sea. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different cities, which I'm going to explain to you later. I want this... This is unconventional, a lot of stuff you're getting. But I want that, uh, we have to, to run that film over again for many different people because it's going to take them a little while to get the hang of it. But don't get mad at me, I'm not your enemy. I'm just speaking directly and frankly. So please, think about these things before you set them aside. Now they tell you that without money people will lose their incentive. Who tells you that? The money system. Martin Luther King did not march into the South because someone said, I'm putting 50,000 bucks in your bank account. He marched because he believed in that. Now, when you consider Gandhi, who worked for nothing, trying to free India, he did it for nothing. Jesus didn't work for money. God didn't say, I give you 80 bucks if you do this, 80 bucks an hour. No. I'm afraid of people that work for money. When a guy says, I think your kidney has to come out, a doctor. I don't know if he's trying to pay off a yacht mm -hmm. or whether my kidney has to come out. And the money system is very difficult. This system, the doctor can't say to you, it's all in your head, take this pill, call me three days. The doctor's medical group is responsible for the health of everybody in the community. There's an impartial group that comes in and checks the health. It's mostly computerized. And if it goes below a certain standard, some of them have to go back to school. They're not punished or hurt. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And they can't say it's all in your head because the health check determines yeah. that. So nothing is left in the hands. Like you don't come up to Fresco and say, hey, can I check out a sailboat, sailboat Saturday? I said, there's 15 people before you. Uh, we build more sailboats than the people ask for. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to come to me or fill out any forms. The only difference is you're monitored by satellite. In case there's trouble at sea, we know where you were at. Not Big Brother mm -hmm. looking for you. Do you do it's the it all comes from the desire to be of service rather than everyone. the desire. Yes. Because everybody's rather important. Rather than the desire to serve the self. Right. Am I getting to you? I'm, I'm Is there anything in the Venus Project so far that bothers you? No, not I. Right, now let me polish it off. There's no government to know people, because people tried communism, socialism, they all failed. So the second picture is the government of the future. Let me describe it to you. We have six satellites around the Earth that project a hologram, you know what that is? Yeah. Of the Earth. So you're looking at the real world, mm -hmm. so you can see every hurricane, mm -hmm. the temperatures all over the world, 
and from 3,000 miles in space with an infrared camera, plant diseases show up as red in the Amazon jungle. All over the world you can see the condition of plants, no more opinions. And if you say, you walk over to those image screens and you talk, you say, how many planes are in the air right now? It'll say 12,404, 448, continuous inventory, every hurricane, every fish migration. Under the water we have sonar, which shows you where all the... Uh, some people ask questions like, how does this differ from communism, the Venus Project? Mm -hmm. It differs considerably because communism uses money, it has armies, navies, banks, we don't have any of those things. It has social stratification, the commissars, and all. Mm -hmm. we don't have that. And we don't have the value system it has. So it's a very different system. It's using high tech and it has no government. When did you have a government, you have people taking care of their brother-in-law, you know, people taking care of their friends. You can't have that in a computer-operated society. Right. So even if you wanted to ship, say, 500 cars to New Orleans, since the computers are connected to transportation industry, they'll tell you you can't, the bridges are washed out. So your decision-making will be broad, because you have more, you don't have to pick up a phone. And we'll use the North and South Pole for storing surplus food and grain. Here's nature's great bank. So all the nations that overproduce, we have sealed cottages that go on the North and South Pole. So if there's an earthquake in Japan and millions are homeless and starving, we have immediate access to food. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to school, bring in a can of beans or oatmeal. The whole thing is one system. Right. So instead of taking Euro container ships, they unload one container at a time. The whole container section floats off the ship. That gives you, that ship cost a billion dollars. You tie it up for three days, taking all that stuff off. When you float the whole container section off, and then float another one on and go off, mm -hmm. you get three times the use of transportation. So the way the system is managed, all these individual companies making vacuum cleaners, same thing, mm -hmm. making drums and musical instruments, we will produce an enormous quantity. Just remember, during a depression, right now, there's all kinds of stuff in stores. People don't have the money. So if you just produce goods and services, and kids go back to college and study whatever they want to study, not what, what you, to, to become a doctor so right. you have a lot of money, you'll have access to anything you want. Mm -hmm. For example, the medical books, will be self-updating by laser beam, unless you put hold on it. Mm -hmm. But so can, all your books will be updated. Instead of delivering magazines like they do today, mm -hmm. you will have a screen of automated publication. For example, you'll have a window shade that comes down in front of your TV set. All the news of the day is printed on it. Mm -hmm. Then you take it off and read it, hang it back up. It's erased by infrared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you, instead of these kids delivering newspapers, mm -hmm. cutting down your forest, Wistful. there's no, no information out there. And so, I'm not interested in patching up this society. I like to change the whole thing because we're running out of time. It isn't machines that are poisoning the oceans and the air, it's man. Mm -hmm. It isn't machines that drop bombs on cities, it's people in an airplane. It isn't guided missiles, they're guided by people. So don't turn your anger against the machines. Mm -hmm. They are built a certain way, and men use them in the wrong way. Where you got these ideas, the human body? Yes, I, I'm mostly from the human body. If the brain said, I do all the thinking, I want most of the nutrients. Then the lungs would say, wait a while, if I don't oxygenate the blood, you would die as a brain. So the brain says, what do you need? Everything you need. All the nutrients, everything. Then the liver would say, if I don't filter the blood, both you guys would die. So all the organs of the body get whatever they need. If you had a free enterprise system in the body, you'd die in about an hour. Ah. Do you understand the point? Use these examples. 
run this up there because I had a I read about a girl in Reader's Digest. She said she was about to get in an airplane and she didn't know but something came over her mm -hmm. and she didn't get on and 150 people were burned alive at crash. So she said, Jesus saved me. And 45 years ago she was going to speak at the Hollywood Presbyterian Church. So I went there and she's explaining all this to the congregation. And when she got through, they stood up and said, how wonderful, God bless you, Jesus save you. So I walked right up to the pulpit and said, he didn't want you, he wanted 150 people. See, who the hell are you to signal yourself out? Mm -hmm. Christians are so simple, mm -hmm. you know. And I waited outside the church to see what would happen. And they came on, they shook my hand. Silence over the whole church. Because mm -hmm. the people say, there was a whole school bus full of kids and they were burned and Jesus saved my kid. You know, they project their mm -hmm. own values into things. Leave that area alone, you don't know enough about it. Mm -hmm. So, I changed people. Then two Catholic priests came to my seminars. They came for about three weeks. Then they said, Jock, there are things other than the material world that you don't know anything about. You're just talking about making the world a better place. So I said, like what? What material, what spiritual things? They said, well, they know a woman in Palm Springs. I was in California then. That has the power of telekinesis. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Moving objects without touching them. Mm -hmm. I said, Father, don't tell me about it. Take me there because most people are not qualified observers. So they called her up and said, can Jock come there and see this? She said, yes, but I said, tell her that I will check it out when I'm there. Otherwise, I don't want to go if I can't check it out. She says, of course you can check it out. She was very nice. So I came to her home and she put this big vase on the table and it was moving down the table. She was just staring at it. Mm -hmm. The lights were on everything. So I took my fountain pen, which was made of metal, and I moved it along the table, and I got a buzz in the pen. Mm -hmm. And I peeled off the veneer, and she had a bell buzzer upside down with four rubber shock mounts, so you wouldn't mm -hmm. feel the vibration. And the, thing, the table was highly polished, slightly tilted. So I said, Father Dunn, Father Dunn, see, come here. This is how it's done. Mm -hmm. They said, gee, she seemed like such a nice lady. I said, she is a nice lady. Her husband died 10 years ago, and people come to see you about a year after, then they don't come anymore. And her life was made more colorful by doing these things. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of young people over, and people said, that's amazing, all that. And her life was full of color. But she turned to me the minute I exposed her and said, you son of a bitch, you get out of here. I says, I'm not your enemy. Mm -hmm. I just don't tell these kids how you do it. Just say, I have a way of doing it. Otherwise, the kids hope that things work out. They don't try to work them out. Mm -hmm. If you say, all you have to do is concentrate on it, you know, uh, that hurts the kids. So she hugged me and we became friends again. And uh, so, I read of a guy in India, in the Reader's Digest, he said he never used telephone, he communicates by telepathy, all the time. So a group of us brought him over from India, and I said, all you have to do is demonstrate it once. And I shouted from the highest towers, what am I wasting time in a lab trying to <laughs> figure out things? So I said, he said, well, I do that every day. I said, just do it once with me. But before that, he did it with other people, which I watched him do. Now, a woman about 65 years old said, can you read what I'm thinking about? And he says, there's been a death in the family. When you're 65 years old, there's always a death in the family. And uh, it was three months, three weeks, or three years ago that he, and the person leans forward, that means he's on the right track. If they move back, He's mm -hmm. on the wrong track. He reads body language. Yeah. He thought he was reading their mind. And the younger girl will have no more than six questions like, 
why don't I have as many dates as my sister, why don't my parents understand me, probably no more than six things, which he fishes around for. So I said, can you read my mind? He said, oh, of course. I said, what if it's technical? He said, well, I'll describe what's happening. I said, that's good enough. So I pictured something outside the box, outside of probability. I pictured a little mouse this size goes into the zoo and eats an elephant and doesn't get any larger and walks out. If he got that, there's telepathy. Of course, he didn't get it. I forget, well, maybe he missed this one. So I then pictured a carpenter saw, you know, a wood saw with legs, and it walks into the forest and a tree looks at the saw and the tree cuts the saw in half. <laughs> See, now if he got that, there's telepathy. The others, I'm thinking of my grandfather, all that's possible. You know, mm. He can get that. He didn't get anything. So I then read of a couple that and read this digest that had the power of telepathy. So I invited him over to my lab. I said, if you have that power, I will shout it and write about it and everything. Because most people are not qualified observers. So he had his wife go into my bedroom. And he was in the front room and I whispered something in his ear. You know, some movie actor or mm -hmm. president of the past. And his wife came out and she just looked and said, you're thinking of James Fillmore. And that's what I whispered in there, very low. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, let me tell you how it's done. They work together. If you don't know how it's mm -hmm. done, it looks great. They work together on posturing. If he's seated like that, it means Lincoln. Mm -hmm. This means Washington. So all I do is whisper in there and he sits a certain way. Right. But if you don't know that, it looks like He's really reading the mind. Mm -hmm. Then I had another guy come over. He says, look, he says, I know you're skeptical, and I know you're scientific, but I'm the first time we ever met. I said, right. He says, you name a president, then call my friend on your phone in England, and he'll tell you who you called. I said, that sounds pretty good. So I was picturing first Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. I said, you want me to picture him and all that? The guy said, all that will help. Then I called Mr. Benson in England. And the first thing he said to me is, uh, I see a strange hat that flares out like that. And then I see a big black birthmark and a beard and a mustache, and it's Abraham Lincoln. This guy called in England. Then he said, now, you want to call a friend of mine in New Jersey who's also psychic. So you pick a movie actor. So I picked, you know, Gary Grant is. Mm -hmm. Well, in no. those days, it was a, he was a star. So I called Gary this guy Grant. in New Jersey. Yeah. He says, uh, I see a skinny guy actor. His name is Gary Grant. Right away. That was the best I've seen. Here's how it's done. But if you don't know how it's done, most people that see that are convinced there's telepathy. He's got a friend in England. Mm -hmm. And if you ask for Mr. B the guy's name is Throckmorton. But if you ask the Benz, Mr. Benson, it's Abraham Lincoln. Same guy in England. He's got a list. If you ask Mr. Thornton, it's Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. So he's got that list. Depends on who you ask for. Right. But if you don't know that, hey, I've slick. seen it, I heard it with my own ear. Normal people are not qualified observers. Also, I've got a guy in Trinidad, an Indian that can change his pulse rate. And the doctors would check in his pulse and he'd make it weak or strong. So I ch checked it I had a cork ball under the armpit pressing, he weakened his pulse. But the doctors didn't know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Before I went on this hunt for extra physical phenomena, I read everything I can get hold of on how it's done. Have you heard of the girl in Russia named Natasha Dinkin? <laughs> Who can see through walls? Yeah, want well, the guy that bent, bent spoons and all that. Uh, no, uh, it's a, it's a woman. She's like sixteen. Yeah. And she can yeah. see through walls. Yeah. And see through your body and diagnose illness in like another yeah. room. Oh, a lot of that stuff. There was a guy that had a wheel turning, and there was no connections electrical. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he said he invented perpetual motion. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I had a detector, and he had a gas that built in the wall that turned around with magnets on it, and that turned this unit. Mm -hmm. But if I checked it out, I want to show you something now. You can't pull them apart, mm -hmm. but don't bend it. Try to pull them apart straight yeah, without bending it at all. Very hard to do. It can mm -hmm. be done. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take it, and do that, you can it's take easy. it apart, mm -hmm. but they're very hard to push together. Keep them in line, you see? It's, it can be done, yeah, but no, it's very <laughs> hard. That's mm -hmm. how maglev trains work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's how drop the, the telepathists work. Okay. I take a A magnet sometimes, one of them, very hard to get off, hold it in your hand. And I put a picture of George Washington and Lincoln on the other side. And this is built under the table. And I say, Lincoln, Washington, you know. And the kids think I'm blowing on it. So I put a glass over it. Hold your other hand under it and try to block it doubly. Close, you know. Don loves you. Oh. It doesn't matter, okay? But if you don't know that, and I can do all that, but I wouldn't do that. I would never deceive people. Mm -hmm. I would tell them how it was done. Everything that was done was done with rare earth magnets. There's, then there was the another guy, guy in the Bible, Saint. Mm -hmm. He had a halo glowing on his head. If you get the book called Anomalies and Curiosities in Medicine, there are skin diseases that are phosphorescent. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. So if you had a scalp disease, it would glow in the dark. Really? Oh, yeah. But if you don't know those things, you get into metaphysics. Right. And that's strictly bullshit. All of it. There's nothing... Well, nature is very lawful. And it doesn't buy it. The cat can't turn into a horse. You don't believe in mutants? In what? In mutants? Mutants? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's real. Freaks, mutants, all that. But all floating in midair, all that's done electromagnetically, or there's no magic. Mm -hmm. Now the people that read your aura, you heard of that? Mm -hmm. That's another BS thing. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Well, there are many diseases of the eye and eye or that cause a double image around you, but they're not seeing an aura. They don't know what they're seeing. But if you get the book Anomalies, if you really want to know, then there's a book called Unusual phenomena. That book is raining fish and frogs and snakes. All that's real. Sometimes a vortex picks them up and drops them. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's no magic. A, a monkey doesn't turn into, a, into an elephant. That's what I mean by magic. Now, that people go to a place called Lourdes, you know about mm -hmm. it? In wheelchairs and get up and walk. Now, why doesn't a guy go there without legs and say, I need legs? Mm -hmm. They always ask for reasonable things. A guy without an eyeball doesn't go there and says, I need a right eye. It was, it was an auto accident ten years ago. Never. Mm -hmm. So you check on Lourdes, you'll find that most people that get out of wheelchairs, not all of them, are hysterically paralyzed. You know what that means? Sometimes they see their kid run over by a Mack trucker. They can't walk in. And sometimes if you believe in something, brought up to believe in it, like a witch doctor. Mm -hmm. He says, a man that committed the crime will die. So he holds a skull. He lines up all the people and he holds a skull over the head. Mm -hmm. As he gets nearer the guy that committed it, that guy is brought up to believe in it and he starts shaking. And sometimes they drop dead. Mm -hmm. Can you understand that? <laughs> now there's such a thing as psychosomatic conditions where an asthmatic, according to the medical books, got up at night and said, I can't breathe, the nurse opened the window, I'm having trouble. So he, no nurse came. So he picked up the water jug and threw it at the window, took five deep breaths and went back to sleep. In the morning, he hit the medical cabinet, not the window. You understand? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't get that part. Sometimes your attitude, if you're fed the best, healthiest food in the world, but are a depressed person, it turns to poison. Mm -hmm. See, so a good attitude is good for your health, but there's no magic. 
You can't make a table levitate. So it's just degrees of not understanding that makes the thing look. A negative. lot of stuff saying you can say. Honestly, I don't know how he did it. This guy in England told me who I was thinking. Say I don't know how he did it, but don't invent. He did it by telepathy. 